First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Prescription products require completion of an online medication consultation with an independent healthcare provider through the LifeMD platform and are only available if prescribed. Subscription required. Individual results may vary. Additional restrictions apply at LifeMD.com. Read all warnings before using GLP-1s. Side effects may include a risk of thyroid C-cell tumors. Do not use GLP-1s if you or your family have a history of thyroid cancer. If you've struggled for years to lose weight and have given up hope, did you know you can now access GLP-1 prescription medications through LifeMD? LifeMD is now offering eligible patients online access to GLP-1s, the breakthrough prescription medication that can help you lose body fat and weight. Listen to what people are saying. You just take your shot. It doesn't feel like you're on a diet. What I wasn't expecting it to do was to shut off the food noise. This was life-altering, and if I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it. And here's the best part. Your insurance may cover 100% of the cost of your medication. So go to TryLifeMD.com to have your eligibility checked right now. Get started today at TryLifeMD.com. That's T-R-Y-L-I-F-E-M-D.com. Right now, the Rome City Schools are resuming on April 12th is the plan for in-person instruction. Peter Blake is the superintendent of schools at Rome and is on the line now. Good morning, Peter Blake. Thanks for coming on. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Um, so this has been a long year, right? It's been a, a long couple of school years. Uh, here we are. Uh, but it looks like um, a little bit of normalcy, and it's not going to be easy. But you guys, by April 12th, are looking to, to make your way back to in-person, right? Yes, that is correct. I think uh, most of our school districts in our region are trying to uh, get the kids back to some kind of, uh, as you said, normalcy here before we end the year and, and wrap up for the summer. What did uh, what factors went into the decision as to when to come back and whether or not it was safe to come back? Well, I think the big one uh, is the most recent CDC announcement uh, and understanding that we anticipate that the state government will adopt those regulations at some point here in the next couple of weeks that that reduction of social distancing is huge uh and then obviously on top of that the minimization of the infection rate regionally uh has really dropped off a cliff it doesn't mean it can't spike again but it certainly has diminished quite a bit over the past few weeks and uh, those two things in combination uh, really made us feel comfortable that we can do this uh safely and uh, effectively for our kids and families do you is there a percentage um is there a percentage of parents or students who have said, "I'm look, I understand it's coming down, but I would rather finish off this school year with the remote instruction. Uh, do you have a, is it 10%, 25%? Do you know about how many students won't be coming back for in, in-person instruction? And uh, is that even something that's being offered in Rome? Uh, we do, and it is being offered. The state uh, requires us for this school year, the state is requiring all school districts to offer remote instruction to families and students uh, regardless. But we were we were in the middle of doing a survey anyways to try and get a percentage of how many people wanted five days instruction. And so in Rome, we're right about 17% of students uh, that want to remain completely remote for the rest of this year. And then uh, there's a small faction of folks that want their kids to kind of still do hybrid which is they've already been doing hybrid, but they want to continue with that, be in school a few days a week and stay home a few days a week. You know, what is interesting about this whole uh, remote thing is what the experts seem to be, uh, and I consider you one one of those experts, uh, what many of the experts have learned is there are some children that this is terrible for, uh, you know, the, 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 the distance learning is awful for them. It's just not, it doesn't work with their... Uh, with their personality, and we could go further on this. Uh, others, they get along. But then there's a certain group that may um, actually thrive during this. It's very interesting. Yeah, you're correct about that. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that New York State will allow remote learning to continue for all students, uh, K through 12. Right now, uh, you can do remote learning as a high school student in New York. Uh, it's not easy. It hasn't been easy, but that was an option to do kind of online schooling in New York. But New York was one of the most uh, strict states in the nation with allowing that. There are states in our uh, nation that have been allowing remote learning for high school students for over a decade now. Uh, and really, for the reasons you pointed out, it is a very effective tool for students that 
Uh, they want to do academics and education. They just don't want to have to deal with some of the societal issues that might mm-hmm. come with being in a physical building. Yeah, that is, um, and again, that goes back to the way certain kids learn. It goes back to personality. It's uh, it's quite interesting. I, I how has the uh, how how hard has this been? I mean, I, I know that. Um, having to go remote has been something that uh, uh, there is a group of parents out there that are furious. In some cases, there's been protesting. Um, how has it been in your district, um, and how hard has it been for, for the administration and really for everybody during all this? Yeah, I, I think uh, in a moment of true honesty with you, I don't know that anybody would ever be honest with you about how hard it's been. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and I commend I commend our entire team here in Rome for that. From the all the entire staff to all of our parents, uh, it's been very challenging. Uh, you know, people, your administrative staff now in every school district, we're going on probably 380 plus consecutive days of work. Uh, there has not been time off. Whether you you can say you're taking a vacation a day, but you're not. You're working mm-hmm. every day of the week, no matter what. Uh, your teachers are are stressed and taxed. They've been asked to do things the past year that they've never thought they've had to do. Uh, you're, you're basically changing a system that's been in place for a hundred years yeah. uh, with with very little uh, changes to it, but they've done it. And, and while they're stressed and that it's been frustrating and they voice those frustrations internally, they don't do it outwardly. They do what they can to be best for kids. And then the parents are in the same boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our parents have been great. Like every place, we've had parents frustrated about needing to do remote and and wanting kids in more often, but they've been willing to listen to the reasons why certain things can't happen, and then they go back to the drawing board and, and bring forward further ideas. And so it's it's been not easy on anybody, but at least in Rome, I'm, I'm proud to say I'm proud to work here because we all have done everything we can, despite the stress and the yeah, challenges, yeah. to do what we can that's best for kids. How much was uh, how much of a factor was the uh, the reduction in social distancing that three feet situation uh, that that had to because the six feet was a real problem. Yeah, that, that, that was the single largest factor, absolutely, yeah. no, no doubt. It, it would seem that in a typical, I'm, I'm talking prior to COVID, in a typical classroom setting, the desks are already spaced about three feet, right? I mean, six feet's tough to pull off, but three feet's that's, kind of yeah, what it was yeah. already. Yes, you are correct. That, that's a more of a traditional classroom. The, the big issue with three feet still remains that uh, over the years, the educational trend for instructions changed slightly that in the kindergarten and first grade classroom in the early years, uh, we tend to use tables more than desks. Oh, so that okay. still can present a slight problem. And uh, when you get to grades two, three, four, five-ish, you tend to have the desks in groups as opposed to the traditional rows that we might remember. Right. Uh, so, so you still have a little bit of an issue there if you have a larger class size that's used to sitting in groups. Now you got to go into rows, but you're correct. Generally, the classrooms are big enough yeah. to space the desk normally three feet apart. It, part of the issue there is that they're they're facing each other, right? I mean, I know they'll have masks on, but yeah. they're they're face to face. Do you now. use? Are, are you using any of the plastic dividers? We are not using the okay. plastic dividers. Uh, we we were investigating that. Uh, for us, we we were. Uh, anticipating a ballpark of uh, roughly a half a million dollars in expenditures. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, the the lead time to get the product is you know anywhere from three to four weeks out. And on top of that, because we were using tables, uh, we would needed to order a substantial amount of desks uh, to replace the tables to actually use the barriers. And the barriers would be something that eventually go in a closet, and that's mm-hmm. why I've been hesitant to do it. Yep. Uh, I could justify purchasing desks because I could then use those desks in other classrooms once we bring tables back. But uh, fortunately, the CDC has kind of made that uh, necessity not need to be there, and we're going to move forward with just the right. masks. And then my final uh, inquiry here is uh, this new uh, stimulus package that's going out. It looks like it's going to trickle down to schools, which is going to really uh, save a lot of districts. Are you feeling better about the the financial side going forward? I am feeling a a lot better about the financial side. There's a couple of things out there right now that, you know, we don't have a ton of language about what they mean. Um, But the one thing, and I've said this about the most recent stimulus for months now, is that I hope they spread it out over the course of years 
And it sounds like that's what they're going to do. It's going to be something that's not a one lump sum. It's you get a little bit each of the next three years. I think that's going to be really beneficial for schools. That helps us plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a small safety net in each of the next three years, and then the the state assembly and the Senate one house budgets uh, are also very promising for schools. We'll see how much of that comes to fruition in the next couple of weeks if we can get an on time state budget. But yeah. right now, all signs are pointing in a positive direction for. And, and that's important. Am I correct in saying that um, that schools can only carry so much of a fund balance? Is that true? That, well, that is true. You're supposed to only carry a 4% uh, fund balance, but there's districts that have up to 60% of fund balance in wow. their uh, bank accounts. And, and I've been an advocate in Albany of uh, when we talk about and then I know you're very versed in school finance, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, there's districts that have plenty of money that continue to get state aid that don't need it. And there's no penalty right now for carrying a fund balance of more than 4%. And any auditor, including our auditors here in Rome, will tell you you should have way closer to 20% fund balance in the bank in case yeah. something goes catastrophically wrong. So, well, but, like what, but what, they are looking to increase that number. And what could go wrong, right? Isn't that yeah. uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? And then look at yeah. Clorox you know, look shortage, at, maybe? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, interesting <laughs> stuff. I, uh, Peter, I know you've been under a lot of fire uh, through all of this. And, and and because it's been hard on everybody, students and parents and teachers and staff and, and janitorial and everybody, bus drivers. But uh, I think you guys have done a you've done the, the best possible job you could do out there. And uh, good luck and congratulations on the uh, on the 12th. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, Peter Blake. Be well. Uh, you do the same as the superintendent of schools at uh, at Rome.